Hello and welcome to Podtoid. We are your hosts. I am CJ. I'm Chris. I'm Charlotte. I'm Occam's. And this is episode 398. Um, I would like to announce right out of the gate that there will be no Simpsons talk this week. Sorry about that. Uh, Aww. So if you <laughs> if you only listened last week and were hoping to hear Chris rant about how the Lady Gaga episode is an affront to the Lord, uh, you know, we may have to start our own podcast. That's just that. I mean, that's original, right? There's no other Simpsons podcast, right? No, there's there's no other podcasts about anything. Yeah, there's, this there's, is the only there's, one. There's one other about video games. I think there's one about movies. Maybe two. I think I've heard a new one starting. That's about it. Uh, yeah, that was insane how many people started listening. Just I think just for that episode. And so I kind of feel bad because, you know, we're not The Simpsons show. But, oh, well. Um, but we do have a good episode well, maybe, today. maybe it was that. Like, you haven't received letters from the audience, I assume. Maybe they were, maybe it was about, um, I'm trying to think what else we discussed. I can't even remember. Not Carrot Cake. That was another episode. <laughs> I've forgotten already. All I remember is the same. Children maybe in Tuxedos. It was, it was definitely it was the about, children in Tuxedos. Or, or maybe everyone was listening in to agree with me that you shouldn't put a neckerchief on a dog. <laughs> Could have been that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll, we have a good episode today. Uh, we're going to talk about some games and go over some of the console news that came out this week. Uh, but before we get all into that, uh, I have a question for you, Chris. And Charlotte, you can chime in as well. Also, the cat, if they want to join in. Uh, <laughs> my question that's is... Actually, that was actually me. That, that was, was you? Wow, that's a yeah. great cat call. <laughs> um, what is up with British TV? Uh, I don't watch television. Oh, Be okay. more specific. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a lot of shit that producers over there are able to get away with that you could really never do in the states uh charlotte i remember tweeting with you about a show where uh people are completely naked and they choose dates based on which body they like the best and they oh you know, they, yeah yeah um and nothing's blurred out you see everything there was a lot of dong and a lot of a jj on that show uh, mm-hmm. but there's a there's a new show set to air this friday on channel four for anyone who isn't going to see endgame uh, that may be even more ridiculous, and I'll let the promo speak for itself. In a unique experiment, these brave couples film their sex lives to document what they get up to in the bedroom. Get the idea now. This is a good bit. Ryan's awake. Then watch it back with other people. Like who doesn't want better sex? Say your foot. This is an amazing. <laughs> oh my. Hoping their advice can save their relationship. So the point of this show is regular people from around, I assume, the United Kingdom. And they show a diverse array of couples. There's uh, at least one lesbian couple that they showed in the promo. Film themselves having sex and then allow an expert to sit back and critique their style. Literally a stranger will be on hand to explain how the man is doing it wrong. In addition to all the millions of people that will be watching at home as well. Is that, I mean, what is going on with, with Channel 4? Well, I can't tell you like what's particularly going on, but um, that's obviously and this is guesswork on my part. But like that's obviously like terrestrial television, so it's not like paid TV. Do you know what I mean? It's um, it's it's free television for everyone. And I think in the advent of like Netflix and all these other shows, like terrestrial free TV's basically gotten a little bit desperate <laughs> because everyone's watching like good, like you know American drama or whatever or just movies. So like channel four for years now has just been knocking out all sorts of shows that are always, um, it's always like the circus. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's always come and look at, they have one, they have one where like you just go on if you've got like a really horrible, like illness or like skin disorder and they, under the pretense of it being educational, Mm -hmm. but it's really kind of almost shown more just like come and gaze. Do you know what I mean? Come and look, (laughs) look, But uh, there's all sorts of shows that Channel 4 do, which are kind of like, come and stare at this, if you know what I mean. Did I mean, you watch Channel Sex 4. Box? Uh, no, I don't know. What, no. Is that what that, what's that? Is that that, that show? was a show from a few years ago that actually made it over across the pond. 
uh, that a couple would go into a windowless and cameraless box in front of a studio audience, have sex, and then come out and discuss it afterwards. No, I did not watch Sex Box. <laughs> <laughs> the, th- the thing is, as well, is Channel 4 like started out as this super, super liberal right on um like student programming Mm -hmm. like when channel 4 first started in the 80s the whole point was it was like we show french films and stuff (laughs) like that was their whole like gimmick and they had like chat shows that were literally set in nightclubs with just like the nightclub happening in the background Mm -hmm. and then as time's gone on it's more become this almost like come and look at the weirdies show (laughs) i I mean mean? that happens to all channels i mean we had here in the States, we have uh, A and E, which stands for Arts and Entertainment. Uh, that used to be like, here's a ballet, here's a one act play being performed on off Broadway. And then it turned into, here comes Honey Boo Boo, and here's some other white trash family. And it, it, it just, Man. yeah, it's uh, over time, it just degrades itself into the lowest common denominator. Doesn't the Learning Channel have My Strange Addiction on it? Like, how is that learning? Except yeah. they're learning that you should not eat mattress. <laughs> it's self-explanatory. Oh, I, I think it's notable that the Learning Channel hasn't been the Learning Channel in a number of years, that it is officially branded as TLC. Yeah. And it dropped the Learning Channel moniker okay. years ago. Yeah. yeah. The only thing you're learning is just how fucked up Americans are when you watch that show. I'm addicted to eating nails. Why? Why are we giving this person their 15 minutes of fame? Did you see the one where a woman was eating a husband's ashes? That was just so sad. (laughs) 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 What do you... What do you pair that with? Is it just like a spoonful of ashes helps the medicine go down? Or do you like like put it on toast or something? <laughs> I've, I've seen a thing where you can take ashes, put them in a glycerin mold and make a dildo out of it. So. I, yeah, that is true. I have seen that. Maybe you like uh, put it in a Ziploc bag and you throw some chicken in it and it becomes like a like a breading for some deep fried chicken. <laughs> some blackened chicken. <laughs> I was just wondering with with you know sex tape and sex box how long before channel 4 is just a stream of pornhub that does remind me just as an amusing like side um when channel 4 first started and I told you and they considered themselves like the arts channel and the liberal channel mm-hmm. they used to um show films that had like full frontal nudity in like you know european movies but whenever they did in the corner of the screen was like a big red triangle so the idea was that you if you turned over, you saw the red triangle, and it was like a, it was ostensibly a warning that the film you were watching was going to have full frontal nudity in. <laughs> but what it actually served as was, fuck, the red triangle, we're going to see boobs in this. Of course, yeah. Fucking television. Ah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, is why we should, this is why we should all just stick to seasons one through eight of The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> have I ever told you what I think of The Simpsons? No, actually, I think that would no. make a... A good idea for an episode. We could just dedicate 10 to 20 minutes to it. Maybe talking about it would give us more viewers than the show he's ever had (laughs) since we came back. Um, By the way, completely unrelated to anything that we were talking about, uh, the article where I read about sex tape had a link to another article it said I might be interested in. And the article was titled, Having Sex Can Unblock a Stuffy Nose. And I was just wondering, how big does a nostril have to be for that to work? (laughs) Um, i didn't bother reading the article to see how the science works and i frankly don't care uh let's get to talking about games and charlotte we're going to start with you uh you've been playing the last of us classic yep um yeah i was just trolling through what my boyfriend had on his ps4 (laughs) and he happened to have the last of us so i started playing a bit of that this weekend um this long weekend It's really good. Like, well, nobody needs me to tell them that The Last of Us is really good. It's really good. But um, the first couple of hours, I was kind of surprised it wasn't as scary as I was expecting it to be. And it felt very much like um, I was getting real Uncharted vibes from it, which I kind of wasn't expecting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really enjoying the crafting as well. I can tell I'm going to really enjoy um, just just the feeling of like collecting more stuff and patching it together to make my own health items and shivs is really satisfying. Um, I stopped at the first time when you're in like the basement and there's a load of clickers and you have to 
sort of dodged them. Yeah. I um, managed the first two through um, sneaking up on them and shaving them, which is very, very satisfying. I'll be doing that as much as possible. Um, but the th- third and the fourth one, I tried to sneak up on the third one, but I didn't get a prompt to tackle him from behind, and then he ate me. So, <laughs> shame. Yeah. Shame. How, how have you in, been enjoying the voice acting? Because for me, it's probably the pinnacle of video game voice acting. I don't know. It's not that it's blended into the background as in it's mediocre, but it just sort of, it's like we don't talk about the voices in um, any live action stuff, really. I think Mm -hmm. it's just that good that it just doesn't really um, stick out as being out of place or anything. So yeah, I think it's some of the best that I've ever experienced. It's really good. It it felt very natural, which I think is a testament to their ability. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I didn't cry at the. Uh, not spoiling too much, but say, let's just say there's something sad that happens at the beginning, and I didn't cry, and that, and my boyfriend was judging me quite harshly for not crying. <laughs> but I knew it was coming because it's such a. It's kind of such a um, famous game, and it's kind of getting on in the years a little bit now. Yeah. Um. So I, I knew it was going to happen, and. I felt like once I knew it wasn't something that would make me cry. I was totally expecting to cry, but for whatever reason, the tears did not come. I think so. it's it's odd that you would cry just because a biracial couple gets engaged. That seems weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> tears of joy, Occam's tears of joy. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I mean it's a it's a seven year old game by now, and it's just it's it's aging pretty well. Um, but that opening sequence that. I, mm-hmm. I, that's I'll, that's something I'll never forget. It's so fucking well done. Mm-hmm. I don't um I don't particularly care for The Last of Us to be, be honest, but um I'll totally stand up for what you're saying about that opening. I thought that prologue was really well done and like really moving. And like the genius of it is to give you characters for like four, five, six minutes, and then have an event that affects you like that, even though you like met these characters so recently yeah absolutely yeah um, a moment that stands out for me at the moment as absolute genius is the thing with the watch where um ellie says that your watch is broken and how it's referring back to earlier on when the daughter says your watch is broken i thought that was really clever yeah that's uh i mean in addition to the voice acting the writing in that game is just spot on uh and i've never beat i've never beat i've only played halfway through it and then moved on to other, or no, my uh, my roommate sold his copy of the game, but uh, yeah, just I mean, the half that I did play has just been so fucking memorable and easily one of the best games of the last generation. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Occam's. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to you. All I right. don't well, see what you have been playing this week because you didn't fill out the yeah. rundown. All right. Well, that's a weird weird flex, but cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> good to. Just- <laughs> Get into that, why don't we? Um, I, I used that term for the first time this week, and it was like completely the wrong context. Like the person yeah. was just like, "Oh, I'm, no, that's not a flex." That's, I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, yeah. It was I'm, like a, I, it was like Ron Burgundy and his "When in Rome." You know what I mean? When it's just like sometimes you just got to say "When in Rome." That was like me saying weird flex earlier this week. Oh, Arkansas, what are you playing? Well, um, I cl- I've been playing a lot of video games, so many that I couldn't uh, fill out the pod toy sheet this week, which mm. now the world knows. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What have I been playing? Path of Exile, still. It's just it's mindless fun. I'm still trying to figure out the how to make a character because there's a thousand stupid uh, options on that that grid. It's it's I don't. I just I don't understand why there's so many so many options on this 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 like skill grid. It's like a sphere grid. If Stephen Hawking designed it, it just Jesus wept. It's 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 intense, but it's a fun, dumb game. And then uh, while I was uh, visiting my family, I found my Dreamcast, and nice. I have it now. I've got it set up, and yeah, so I've been playing Power Stone and Rival Schools and Cannon Spike and Charge and Blast and many, many, many silly games and a bunch of um like ROMs and weirdo, like people, there's this thing called like Beats of Rage or Streets of Rage Remix mm-hmm. or Final Fight Rage Remix. And it's just somebody who's like added Street Fighter characters to Final Fight or Battletoads show up and uh, yeah, like, the, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And yeah. they're, they're, 
they're ridiculous and fun. So it's been a nice little trip down memory lane. Though I do need to get a um, a proper HDMI converter cable thing because it looks like shit on the television using just the VGA cable. So yeah, I remember um, my friend had one of those in college and just like three discs that had the entirety of the SNES catalog on them because those yeah, things were I've so, got that. so fucking easy to to uh, put to mod and to to play games into they're not made to play so yeah yeah it's it's quite wonderful and um i it, if for any listeners out there who who never had a dreamcast or not really familiar with them it's it's well worth your time to look into it's one of it's a weird system it's one of my personal favorites and the amount of um adaptability you can have with with one is is really really fun uh just because you can just play random shit i guess just the way you could uh maybe mod a wii i think that was a big thing back in the day mm-hmm. being able to like just add a, a, tons and tons of random games it's sort of like that but yeah even much e- much easier because all you have to do is like download a file and like burn a cd and boom you have a game it was really kind of the downfall of the system because it was way too easy just to steal shit uh, well, as this it was one of the yeah. downfalls well, that yeah, sure. That's they're they're much smarter people have written much better uh, articles than I ever could about it. But blah blah blah. Uh, so other than that, uh, not much. I really regret selling my Dreamcast because I had such great games for it, and you know it wasn't worth the hundred and twelve dollars I got back. I got for it in retrospect. So I remember selling my Dreamcast, my last Dreamcast, because I had a couple uh, to a shop, and whilst I was in the shop someone came in and bought it and the person who bought it kind of you know you shouldn't judge people but they looked like they were going to treat it really badly like they looked like they didn't give a shit <laughs> and like they came in and they were just like have you got any dreamcasts and that guy behind the counter was like yeah we've got this one it's just coming he was like oh fucking wicked i'll take it and i was still on the other side of the counter and i was almost just like i'll give you double <laughs> If you just yeah. leave the shop and don't take my Dreamcast, <laughs> I've got it's it's great. It's like, oh, I'm gonna go beat a dog to death now. You know, just <laughs> just some monster person. It's, it's like when you go to an arcade and you see a five year old. It's like oh, he's gonna beat the shit out of every every arcade unit he goes to, isn't he? And sure enough, he just pounds on the buttons. You're like, well, now now I know why everything's broken. Um, a friend of mine bought a um, a Jew beat um, like arcade. Not an, not an arcade cabinet. He made sort of his own arcade cabinet. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's like a rhythm game and you have to touch a panel panels and it's like four by four of these glass panels. And I had a go on it on Friday and I was so scared of breaking anything. I'm like, I am this ham-fisted toddler and I'm just going to completely wreck his <laughs> 1,000 euros setup. It was the most terrifying thing ever. <laughs> I imagine if I get one of those ridiculously expensive Capcom arcade sticks uh, with the 16 or 17 built-in games, I will break that within a week. I wouldn't worry about that happening because you're not going to get one. That's true. I'm not going to get one. Because you've got better things to spend your money on. (laughs) Um, All right. For my part uh, this week, and actually for a lot of the month, I've been slowly working my way through... Uh, Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon Everybody, which is the Switch and PS4 uh, port, kind of not exactly a remake, not a straight port of Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo's Dungeon from the Nintendo Wii. Uh, It is a mystery dungeon game, so it's basically a roguelike. If you have played any of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games or Shiren games, you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, And I remember I really, really enjoyed this back on the Wii, and uh, yeah, I, my review went up on Sunday and I was kind of talking about how back then I was enamored with just a single image that I saw on IGN of this game before. And so I was worried about it clouding my my judgment for the game when it actually came out. So it was nice to get uh, a chance to go uh, try it out again. And it actually it, it still holds up pretty well. The genre has definitely improved since this game came out. Uh, I no longer think it's the pinnacle of the of the mystery dungeon games, uh, super or Pokemon super mystery dungeon, I think it's called and Shiren five that's available on the Vita do it much, much better, but it's still a sweet game. It's adorable that the Chocobo is just endlessly cute. Um, it's, it's just kind of archaic in, in a lot of spots and the genre in general is definitely a few steps behind of where other role playing, uh, game franchises are, but, I don't know. It, it, it still works for me, and I'm really glad I got the. I'm getting a chance to try it out again, uh, because 
uh, it's always nice to be able to to have something that is nostalgic in your mind. You know, that you look back on it, you're like, oh, I really enjoyed that and still be able to. Because there's a lot of shit that I enjoyed as a kid that there's no way I'm going to enjoy now. Like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, I loved those as kids. I cannot get into them now. And I, I know I can't go back and watch those old movies and TV shows because I'll just sit there and judge them. Judge them harshly. Have you bothered with the new movies? Uh, yes, I watched both of them. Uh, what and are they, they like? were very mediocre. Oh, that's a shame. I had that happen to me with DuckTales. Oh, yeah? Like I, I have very fond memories of DuckTales growing up and, and remember the, a lot of the episodes and stuff. And I, a couple of years ago, watched a couple episodes of it. And it was just so stupid. Almost <laughs> as stupid as my cat meowing right now when I'm talking. <laughs> I think the oh, only t- thing from my childhood that really holds up is the Batman, the animated series. Like that's the one I can still watch because it, I don't know, it wasn't made with small children in mind. Yeah, so. no, that's a masterclass and not just animation, but storytelling and the, the fucking Paul Dini just gave us something that will last generations to yeah, come. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And everyone has like those big square jaws, which is wicked. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great fucking show and um so many of those hold up and it's you know we, we got harley quinn from it and stuff like that so it, yeah no that's a it's a good it's a good television series yeah also uh my my personal favorite version of clayface chris let's go ahead and wrap up with you what have you been playing this last week you also did not fill out the rundown uh no i didn't um i'm sorry the man <laughs> but i don't always have to confine to uh the rules of society that's all my dreams are about combing my hair. Well, let um, me just ask you, how is Mortal Kombat 11? Because surely you've gotten your review code by now. It comes out on Tuesday. How has have, that been? I have played some Mortal Kombat 11. Um, I'll leave it at that. But as um, <laughs> my review, my review will, will be up when it's up. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I didn't fill out the, the form and I apologize for that. But, you know, when Leonardo da Vinci invented the light bulb, no one asked him, like, did he fill out the form? When Michelangelo painted the Mona Lisa, nobody said to him, oh, did you fill out the form? So I, I don't think I should have to either. You failed history, didn't you? And I just didn't go. <laughs> I told you I'm a rebel. <laughs> I didn't play anything this week. I didn't play anything. I, um, I, I, was, I had a lot of work to do, and I wasn't really in the mood. And um, I did buy a pot a pop stand or whatever it's called for the microphone. Can you hear the difference? It's amazing, isn't it? I can hear the difference. Oh, that's cool. I'm hoping it'd filter out the depression. Like <laughs> the voice goes in and it sucks all like the depression out of it. And then it just filters out kind of so, so my voice kind of sounds more upbeat. I think that's how it works. I think you need a, th- like a thicker version of it. Yeah. Mine's not working in that respect. I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, I didn't play any games. I'm, working on my MK review at the moment. Um, and I watched a film from 1989 set in a super gym where people keep dying because the machines keep like ripping them in half. <laughs> Is that death spa? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. And, um, of course, really, it, looks, it. Yeah. And it looks amazing. Like it looks like I said, on um, I said on my, what have you been playing article that it looks like Suspiria fucked flash dance. <laughs> <laughs> so is this like just the machines are designed that way or is it like a maximum overdrive type of thing where they it's, come well, alive? It, oh, spoilers. Um, the guy who owns the uh, gym, he, um, he's, his girlfriend died and he's got like a new girlfriend who works at the gym with him and all these things start happening. And it's kind of that his, basically his, his old girlfriend who's like jealous is like possessing the machines and like killing people. But it, it's like it, 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 one guy gets pulled in half on a rowing machine and another woman's in like a, uh, a smoothie bar and her, her hands get caught in the blender and stuff like that. And chlorine starts coming out of the sauna and starts melting all the people in the sauna. And <laughs> in Britain, it's called death spa, but for some reason in Britain, it was, ch- they changed the name to witch bitch. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> God. 
That sounds like a really aggressive chicken wing place. It's really nihilistic as well. Like it really kicks up at the end. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in like eight, in like the very late eighties, there was that huge fashion craze where everybody like went to the gym, and it wasn't even because they wanted. It wasn't so much because they wanted to get in shape. It was almost just like it was fashionable to be seen at the gym working out. So all these super gyms opened up that could host like four hundred people at the same time or whatever, and it's kind of set in one of those. And it, obviously, it looks like Saved by the Bell. Everyone's just wearing pink and lime green and yellow and all that. So. All of those colours mixed in with like the red of everyone's insides is just like a really good look. Is there a oh, lot of multicolor spandex? Mm. Yeah, tons and the leg of it. warm as doused in blood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and all the walls are painted with triangles and circles that are all just like different colours and everything. It's yeah. You have to wear sunglasses to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> if if you want to see a really fun movie that kind of encapsulates that that fashion craze, it's called Perfect. Uh, it's with Jamie Lee Curtis and John Travolta. Oh yes. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's a that's that's a hoot. That's a real hoot hoot of a film. You put that on the box. <laughs> a hoot of a <laughs> film. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. And by hoot, he means terrible. It's a fucking awful film. Is that the one where um, she gets him into bed by by him going, "Oh, I own a computer," and then she types on the screen, "Wanna fuck?" Something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Which is, I mean, classically how we all uh, lost our virginity, of course. So. <laughs> you are listening to Pod Torrid. I guess that is it for games, but we do have some headlines to cover. It is time for the news. Uh, there are some stories to cover this week, but for the most part, I think the industry is entering a lull as we build up to E3. It's less than two months away. Uh, However, there was a surprising amount of console news over the past few days, and we're going to start with Sony firing the first shots for the next generation of gaming. Uh, As you have no doubt heard by now, Sony dropped the first few details on the upcoming PlayStation 5. A lot of small details about the console were revealed by Mark Cerny, who is the lead architect on the system. The PS5 will reportedly use... Third generation, uh, the third generation of the AMD Ryzen line, I think that's how you pronounce it, and have eight cores from the company's new 7NM Zen 2 microarchitecture, as well as a custom GPU. I don't understand what the fuck any of that means because yeah, I'm not so a technical boring, person. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> letters and numbers, letters and numbers. Uh, it's going to need all that power because Cerny said the console will support ray tracing, which is something else I don't know about other than it has something to do with lighting, as well as native 4K gaming and 8K video. The PlayStation 5 is not scheduled to release this year, but when it does launch, it will do so with complete backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4 and a solid state drive. There are a lot of questions to be answered still, such as will all games have to be downloaded to the system like they are with the PS4? Uh, But I think right now people are very curious about the price. All of that technology is expensive, especially the ray tracing. Uh, I know in Slack we were trying to guesstimate how much that tech will cost, and we were like looking at around $1,000 for a computer that can do all that. Um, I've seen some people saying that Sony is going to take a wash on every system that it sells for the first few years. Um, Either way, Sony didn't give an exact amount, um, but did say it will, quote, Release at a suggested retail price that will be appealing to gamers in light of its advanced feature set, end quote. Uh, that's all we got for now, but I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it. And Chris, we're going to go ahead and start with you. Um, I'm, I'm, looking, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I'm interested to see what's going to happen. I think for a lot of people, just on the, the basic information we got, it's all about the backwards compatibility, isn't it? That was such a they, they mentioned a few things, but that was the thing that really resonated and people were putting in their headlines and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say anything like uh, like too early about it, but it sounds pretty good. Oh, I also like they, they say they really want to focus on cutting down the load times, like hence the SSD. And I definitely think in terms of technology, that's been like the biggest bugbear of this generation has been mm-hmm. like those fucking PS4 load times. I think it was Metro Exodus where you literally could like walk off and make yourself a drink and a sandwich and stuff. And they, they, they hid the load times behind like dialogue, but then the dialogue would end in, it'd still be literally minutes before like <laughs> it. Lo- one, someone on another website timed it. And I'm sure one of the levels took nearly four minutes to load or something like that. So yeah, if, the, if, if the doctor says to you, you got four minutes to live, then that's nothing. But when it's like, there's four minutes left before you can see more of those spiders, the time drags. 
And, you know, there actually, there are a lot of, um, the, to go back to the game I played this week, uh, Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon has, for a Wii game on the Switch, has ridiculously long load times. Like, overly long that I could literally put my Switch down and go, I don't know, clean my teeth. or I don't know why that was the example I went with. That's disgusting, <laughs> CJ. Um, go get a drink, I guess, and come back and finally have the stage loaded. I don't, I don't know why why uh, an old game like that has such ridiculous load times. But you are right. The PlayStation 4, you know, something like Spider-Man, and that was the example that they give. You know, here's Spider-Man loading on a PS4 Pro. It takes a few, takes a while. Here's Spider-Man loading on the, uh, you know, the concept console right now for the PS5 loads in seconds. I mean, just to um, play devil's advocate, um, you can, like... You can obviously put an SSD in a PS4 now if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that, for example, the um, the Persona 5 speedrunning boards have separations depending on whether you're using a solid state drive or a wow. hard. So I, pre- I, I presume you can get a significant boost in load times already if you care enough to swap out your um, SSD, which to be honest, if you play on it a lot and you don't want to get rid of stuff, then you should probably re- be replacing your hard drive with something bigger anyway. So why not do it with an SSD? But everything else um, seems really kind of exciting, but possibly very expensive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of curious about the seven cores, because if you're not having an even number, what's going to happen is, so the left side of the screen is going to have four core support. The right side of the screen is going to have three core support. So how's it going to balance that transfer of core power back and forth to give oh, you man. an even experience? Yeah. I didn't it, think of that. Is that how consoles work? Yeah. It, yeah. Obviously. Also, it says eight cores, not seven. Oh. Eight cores from the company's new 7NM Zen 2 microarchitecture. Oh, Occam's CJ spotted that deliberate mistake, and, and you said he wouldn't spot it. C- congratulations, you won the bet. I'll oh, give you your money later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but back to the PlayStation 5. Um, are you guys like ready for a new generation of gaming? Because I never feel like I am, although clearly with the diluted release schedule coming up for the PS4, Sony is really ready to move on. Um, my wallet's not ready for a new generation of gaming <laughs> because I just I, I just think these are going to be pretty expensive machines. And um, not, yeah. yeah, and I'm not really looking forward to forking out for one or two of them. Yeah. And not only you not only got to get a machine this time, but I, I like I can't remember um, if I, I don't think PS5 technically requires for a 4K TV. But there's really no point in getting a PS5 and playing it on a non-4K TV. So if you've not got a 4K TV, it's probably a sensible idea to get a 4K TV as well, in which case you're going to go well over 1,000 just on a TV and a console. Well, hell, you need that 8K TV for the 8K video so you can watch Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again in 8K. (laughs) Stop that. It would be nice to see uh, just how thick they cake makeup on Cher's face. I look forward to seeing that. (laughs) Um, The second bit of console news we have is out of Microsoft. It was announced this week that it's uh, releasing a diskless version. That's going to cause me troubles if I keep saying diskless. Um, of its Xbox One S hardware called the Xbox One S All Digital Edition, or what Twitter has decided to call the Xbox One SAD. Uh, the system will launch in le- next month and include Sea of Thieves, Microsoft, or not Microsoft, Minecraft, and Forza Horizon 3. The company also announced that Xbox Games Pass Ultimate, which wraps the popular Xbox Games Pass service and the Xbox Live service into a single program for $14.99 a month. Uh, it's actually a really good deal if you plan on getting an Xbox One all digital, but I'm not sure the console itself is such a good deal because it's launching for $250, which is only $50 less than the current Xbox One S model. Um, I don't own an Xbox One, but I wouldn't mind owning one. However, you know when I look at that price and I know that the next generation of gaming is right around the corner and I assume that it's going to be backwards compatible with this generation of Xboxes because it would be dumb for them not to now that we know Sony is like I I feel like it's okay if I skip out on this one even though you know I kind of would get into it if it wasn't $250 or maybe also included six months of Xbox Games Pass Ultimate Um, what are your thoughts on this Occam's I I don't it doesn't seem like fifty dollars is really worth it to me to to go discless and mm-hmm. uh, it, it's again the the 
I would like to get an Xbox One one day uh, mm-hmm. at some point to play my Xbox 360 games. Um, the end, you know, and like there's there's really nothing the Xbox does that uh, means a lot to me uh, other than those 360 games. It's nice that it's I guess they can do better quality video and all that, but I just I never cared. I was always I just want to play like unique gaming experiences, and there were a lot of those on the 360. I've got some amazing games. Uh, Asura's Wrath. Such a good game. Everyone should yeah. play that. Um, but yeah, I just all, none of that appeals to me, and I don't know who this is for. Really, this discless thing, um, especially this is will be what the third iteration of Xbox to come out this generation. Um, Between the what the, the one, the Xbox one X, one, there's a one S, there's an X, and then there's the S all digital. Yeah. So and that, it just feels like it's diluting their brand a bit. But I, I maybe at this point it doesn't matter because everyone's gearing up to to look for you know next year and all. So. I, I will say seeing an Xbox One S console without a disk drive, it's really fucking sleek looking. Like it's yeah. one of the prettiest looking consoles I think that's ever been created. Um, but it's also, like you know, like I said, it's for me, it's not yeah. worth it at two hundred and fifty dollars. No. Yeah. I mean, um, getting a console at this stage is for people mainly, I'd think for people who just missed out on this generation for whatever reason and have some sort of desire to then go and look at the back catalog for that entire console. But like Xbox one has never really done anything to attract people who, um, maybe play things from other consoles Mm -hmm. to actually want to go and play it. There's not really that many standout Xbox one only games. They've kind of dropped the ball on that. So I feel like it's probably going to attract people who want the illusion of something sleek and streamlined, even if that's, Kind of is what you're getting, but not for a reasonable price. It's not like a a basic model or anything. I don't yeah. know. Um, all right. So finally, we turn to the Switch. Uh, there are rumors and reports out there that Nintendo is planning two new versions of the Switch hardware, one that will be smaller and one that will be beefier. Uh, and I think there was actually some confusion about that latter, uh, latter version. Uh, a smaller Switch is all but confirmed at this point, and according to reports, is on, tracks, on track to possibly release this year. Uh, But the talk of this so-called Switch Pro, which is either a more powerful version of the Switch hardware that, you know, would act as a half step for this console generation, um, or it's the next generation of the Switch hardware that is a few years down the line. I I don't know if I've got a clear consensus out of the reports that I've read out of Japan on which of those it is. It might be both. It might be neither. Um, But either way, a report this week said that the so-called uh, Switch Pro has actually been put on the back burner um, and that it's more in the planning stages and they're still trying to figure some stuff out with it. However, uh, it was basically confirmed that the smaller Switch will not lose the ability to dock with a television, meaning it will still have the appeal of the regular Switch just with a smaller screen or lighter build. Uh, I know some of you have said that you would jump onto a portable only switch, but if you got the smaller switch that could dock with a TV at a cheaper price than a regular switch, uh, would that like just make it a must buy for you? Yeah, pretty yeah. much because mm-hmm. I've been wanting to pick one up for a while anyway. And sometimes I think there might be a little voice in the back of my head that's like, well, just hang on and wait till you've got more options and then see what happens to the price of the older models and all of this. So I think it's more interesting to know whether you'd pick one up because you've gone on record, uh, CJ, as saying that like the Switch is almost everything you kind of want out of a console. And it's like, would you be like day one, be like willing to just upgrade because you obviously use your Switch so much, don't you, right? Yes. Uh, for me, it would, it would depend on a few factors. Like the, the fact that it would still, uh, that this thing would supposedly still dock with the television is a huge boost for me of maybe getting one but it kind of comes down to is it actually a smaller uh handheld unit than the regular switch because as of right now the joy con controllers are about as small as i will tolerate for a controller you know when i play just just some pick up and play co-op with someone to use just one of the joy con uh anything smaller than that and my big fat american hands will just crush it yeah, they are comically tiny. I, I, it's, it's <laughs> hilarious. You are listening to Podtoid. That is it for news, which means it is time for the Podtoid question of the week. Why do boys think farts are so funny? They're juvenile and gross. 
Sorry, that is not the pod toy question of the week. Uh, this week's question was inspired by Way Forward, and it's announced team up t- uh, announced team up with Arc System Works for a new entry into the River City series with River City Girls. My question to you is: What other gaming franchise would you like to see come out with an opposite gender version? This is quite easy for me. Uh, mm-hmm. The answer the answer is Spider Man because my favorite comic book character is Spider Woman. So, if you do a gender reversal on spider-man and that's that's like the perfect superhero game for me and that's spider-woman that's jessica drew not this spider gwen shit <laughs> not a fan <laughs> of spider gwen i just i'm just i'm true to my roots man i'm true to, <laughs> true to the good old days so like spider gwen is like the anthropology of spider woman right like that's the like the store anthropology there's no yes. okay there's like a bunch isn't there because there's silk as well yes and there's um, a, um Scarlet Spider, it, yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 like Jessica Drew, who's like the original Spider Woman, she kind of doesn't really get a, a look in as much. They gave her a redesign, and I really like the redesign, even though a lot of people don't. I think she looks fantastic. And then they like gave her a baby, and kind of used that as an example to be like, oh, well, she can't do as much superheroing now because she's raising a child. So we can kind of push her to one side a little bit. And I'm I'm still a bit salty about that. But a Spider Woman game would be great, so I don't have to just keep playing like Lego Marvel superheroes whenever I want to play as her. Uh, now I assume when she had a baby, uh, because she is Spider Woman, she actually laid just a sack of eggs, and a bunch of little babies came crawling out. Nah, I tell you what, it was wicked. She had a baby, like I think it was, if I remember, it was on a scroll ship whilst the ship was being invaded. So, so like she had her baby delivered, and then immediately, while still like wearing the gown, just like leapt off the table and started roundhouse kicking scrolls in the face. It was fucking great. <laughs> they got the, the placentas just flying out slapping. Yeah, the man, it was, it, was, it was nuts. Um, I can't remember. It. it was a while ago. I can't remember if it was Captain Marvel who delivered the baby, but it might have been. And Captain Marvel like delivered the baby and then just as, it, just as um, she gave birth, like the scrolls kind of piled into the room and she just leapt off the table and started kicking the shit out of them. That was fucking great. That's amazing. Truly amazing. Um, I just hope Captain Marvel w- wiped her ass because women <laughs> women poop when they give birth. Just want to throw that out there. Oh, <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do a lot. Um, just, you know, there's there's not a lot of magic in childbirth. <laughs> so. uh, everything for, I know about everything I know about childbirth, I've learned from like afternoon, you know, afternoon TV soaps, and it always seems very simple and clean. And yeah. oh, it's not. It's <laughs> rough. I assume there's going to be a Channel 4 show coming up that's just watching the entire birth. You see the couple have sex, and then nine months later, you watch them give birth. They actually have a program about a maternity ward, and you see a lot of babies coming out. And yes. So it's actually very heartwarming. (laughs) It's the miracle of of life, isn't it? Um, But back to the question. For my part, uh, it's really simple for me as it was for you, Chris. Uh, I would do the all male version of Dead or Alive Extreme. Like, literally, just let me put all the dudes there in like little skimpy bathing suits, slap their ass, make them jump on pools, make them butt bump into each other, and play volleyball. Like, and have Damn them. Damn it! A... You took my game. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna pick that one. <laughs> okay, so Great Charlotte shot. and I are in agreement. Got five minutes. You got five minutes. Think fast. I have a, I have a backup. <laughs> Um, the, the only thing I would I would definitely request is that the guys in the in the Dead or Alive male extreme don't have the janky broken ankles that the women do in that game because oof, that is some weird weird joints there that those ladies have. I mean, if you're into foot stuff, that's not great. <laughs> now, when you say foot stuff, what does that mean? No comment. <laughs> okay, okay, just checking. Uh, uh, speaking of foot stuff, uh, just completely out of the blue uh do you guys remember that senran kagura reflections game that came out for switch where you like just massage the girls yes. yeah they they yeah. added they added some new glorious reflexology which is one of the kind of the fantasy little uh, uh massages that you give where you like can I don't know, use a roller or uh it wasn't a vibrator it was like a just a massage unit on them Her, uh, they, they added personal new ones massager yes a personal massager uh they added new ones and one of them is for people with a feet a foot fetish because you can just start stroking their feet so um don't know why i needed to include that i just it's been on my mind so go ahead charlotte 
Um, so, um, can anybody vaguely remember, and I never played this game, but Rumble Roses? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And an entirely all-male one of that would be rather spectacular. I agree. I mean, that would just be what regular wrestling is for me. Yeah, actually, we were watching wrestling, like, earlier on after we'd eaten our Easter lunch, and I was just thinking, you know, who needs gay porn? <laughs> I think that's just a good question in general. <laughs> uh, question of the week. <laughs> Any gay porn? <laughs> Me? Uh, oh, okay. I'm I guess I'd be the only one. Um, how come do you have an answer for this? God. Uh, you know, it's it's a tough one to, to consider. Maybe I wouldn't mind like an all female version of uh, Final Fight. You know, like, because mm-hmm. well, like they had the three dudes, Hagar, Cody, and Guy, and just like a, a female analog for each of them would be would be fun. Mostly just Hagar, because I just I love like some kind of like former NBA player, WNBA meets like bodybuilder type, and wearing the same outfit though with the belt, but now the belt is like across the the nipples versus just a, a, a kind of a horizontal strap. That'd be fun. Awesome. That is it for this episode of Podtoid. On behalf of Chris, Charlotte, Occam's, and myself, we want to thank you for listening and tune in next week for an all-new show. Uh, and especially if you are going to see Avengers Endgame this week, uh, be sure to tune in because Chris and I will be doing another edition of Spoil Sport. You're looking forward to that, Chris? Absolutely. I can't wait to see that fucking movie. I can't believe how quickly a year's gone by, frankly. Uh- I know. I think everyone's excited to see it, and we'll be covering it next week on Spoil Sports. So, again, thank you for listening, and tune in next week for an all new episode.